<sighs> so we got a little, little something I've been wanting to speak on, a little, a little TED talk or podcast or whatever, if you will. But um, I think you should get prepared. Okay, I think you should get ready. In my opinion, there's something coming. So I know, I know for a fact you guys heard about that stuff. And um, I believe Colorado with the immigrants and all that. And uh, it's getting crazy out here. It's getting weird. Like, there's a lot of crazy things happening. So this is far, far from Colorado. I live in Ohio here. So just three days ago or something, I seen this clip from like a board meeting. And it's from Sylvania, Ohio. So there's this old lady or older lady and her husband. They have immigrants you know posted up in their lawn literally throwing mattresses in their lawn to sleep there throwing garbage everywhere you know not caring disregarding all the laws the local police are not doing nothing at all because they're protected which i mean yeah i understand i'm done with what i'm seeing it is so unsafe in my neighborhood anymore i have the homeless that were trying to camp out and i have I have made concessions with them and I try to help them the best I can to keep them from trying to squat on my property. But it is so unsafe. I have men that cannot speak English in my front yard screaming at me, throwing mattresses in my front yard, throwing trash in my front yard. And I can't, I look at me, I weigh 95 pounds. I couldn't defend myself if I had to. My husband is elderly, and last night, after living in this home for 45 years, he said, Noel, guess what? It's time to pack up and move. He said, we can't do this anymore. He said, it's killing both of us mentally. I don't understand what you expect of us as citizens. I mean, I understand they're here under temporary protected status, and you're protecting them, and I understand that our city services are overwhelmed and understaffed. But who's protecting us? If we're protecting them, who's protecting me? I want out of this town. I am sorry. Please give me a reason to stay. Thank you. You guys are going through a lot of stuff. There's stuff happening where you are. But these grown men that are doing this are not affected like the children and women. Most of these men are fighting age men. I think something is going to happen. The best way to end, you know, or disrupt this civilization would be from the inside. What exactly are they doing? They're getting inside by every means necessary. Literally any means necessary. And now we're just welcoming them in here, welcoming them in here, giving them, you know, whatever they need, you know, here's this, here's that. We don't even help our people out that much. Like, I know people that are struggling. We have a homeless epidemic. We have a mental health epidemic. We have a, a, an epidemic period, you know, and they're helping all these immigrants, but don't want to help the people of the country that, you know, we pay the taxes for this shit. They don't help us out, but they're helping out immigrants. Like, don't get me wrong. Yes, some of them people, 100%, deserve to be here they're not causing any harm or anything like that but a majority of the bad ones are fucking it up for the rest you know like you can't have a quarter of the people you know doing bad shit and the rest doing fine and then it's all good no like that's this does not leave a good taste in my mouth and it just it, it don't make no sense i i 100 percent think you should get prepared if you can own a gun go buy a gun. If you have a gun, go stock up on ammo. If you only have one gun, go buy another one. Take into consideration where you live. If you live in the city, you might not want a whole bunch of rifles. Maybe get a little shotgun, pump action preferably. Pump is the best way to go. You could throw it in the dirt and the mud and it'll still cycle. You could switch out rounds on the fly. So say, you know, you got bird shot in there for whatever reason or buck shot in there for whatever reason you know you pop that motherfucker out so you, you got the tube full of a buck shot but there's a little little birdie over there that you want to eat or some shit for any for any reason you know it's apocalypse or whatever you know pop that that buck shot out throw that bird shot in there rack it boom you got dinner 
throw that buckshot back in there, boom, now you back on protection mode. So shotgun, definitely a good thing to have. Uh, double barrel, do the job. Me personally, a pump is the way to go. They almost never fail. They feed almost any ammo. You need buckshot, birdshot, cut shells, half shells, you know. Like, it, it will probably fire, even if you get a really cheap Turkish $200 fucking shotgun. It will probably cycle just fine. They don't need a whole lot of cleaning. Now, I live in the city. I have a few pistols. I have a 12 gauge pump, and I also have an AR-15. So if you're if you're in like a, a country type area, you know, you know, any you, your your neighbors aren't just a walk away, you know. You might want to have more rifles. You might want to get you a, a 308 or something, something that's gonna reach out there just in case dog when it hurt you know especially even even the little little tiny dogs that bark at every little thing that's a very good alarm system you know like honestly it is they might not do much to protect you but they will let you know that something is there there's a whole bunch of like survival books you can get homesteading books how to grow this how to grow that i recently i started growing um tomatoes and uh cucumbers i did potatoes you know they weren't great but it was the first time i ever tried it so i can't really complain it was decent but uh i highly suggest looking into to something get a security system alarm system cameras anything personally nine mil 45 223 556 12 gauge 410 38 22 any of that is faster than calling 911 so if you can legally carry get you a firearm if you can legally you know if, if your state is constitutional carry carry that shit if you have to get a ccw to carry it i mean me personally i would do it i would rather have that safety on me at all times not just in my home you know you never know what's gonna happen just a couple months back there was a uh, this little boy and his mom at the, at the grocery store got stabbed up and the little boy didn't make it like if that was my son or my daughter i don't know what i would do with myself knowing that i was not able to protect them i didn't have nothing on me to do anything to protect them like Unless I'm going to the doctors or, you know, to court or something like that, I am carrying. I always have a knife on me in my wallet. I have a little survival knife. It's like a credit card thing. It's got a little knife and a little fork in there. I always have that on me and I always have my gun on me. Like, you have to be proficient with the firearms if you're going to carry them every day. So don't just go buy one and just start carrying it. Never go to the range, you know, at least watch them. This is not ideal but at least watch some trusted youtube videos and even watch a couple of ccw classes maybe you know if if you don't have to do any classes if it's constitutional carry and you just have a gun you don't have to do no classes to do anything you should still do something to to get a little bit of knowledge you know like get home you know after work or whatever unload the gun you know triple double check make sure it's unloaded make sure there's you know clear you know no mag in there look down finger down make sure it's unloaded and dry fire you know put in the holster or cock it back put in the holster you know just put your arms down you know just go about with it and then bop, you know put it back in there again bop, put it back in there you know that's not necessarily like i mean that is some it's a it is some sort of training it's dry fire practice well practice that's more of a practice than training but even that is better than not doing anything and if you're going to carry every day you should at least do that try to go to the range as much as possible get proficient with your firearm and don't go gucci and all of them up don't get the, the gucci glock the gucci sig you know the gucci ar like keep something basic now i'm not saying don't get no lights don't get no red dye you know you can paint it if you want whatever that's up to you but don't change the internals too much. When a gun is made from the factory, it's all about reliability, reliability. Not the best shootability necessarily, but reliability. 
So when you start changing internals, triggers, slides, fucking um, springs, you know, you start messing with the, the factory, you know, reliability. So I'm get a light. I, I like lights, me personally. Um, I don't have a light on my AR. I need to. I do have a light on one of my pistols. I have a laser light combo. That's the GX4. I got the TLR6. It's, that's the only thing that I could find that fits on there that has the laser and light combo that I personally like. It's only about 100 lumens, but it still gets the job done. It lights it up perfectly fine. And if you do have red dots and flashlights, don't forget to change out your batteries. That's very important. Change out your batteries. Even if it's still bright, one, like once a year, you know, year and a half, whatever, change your batteries. Can I stress that enough? Because it's going to go dark one day, you're going to need that flashlight, and you're not going to have it. Yes. Charge. Charge or change batteries. Because some are rechargeable. Most have actual batteries in it. But yes, change or charge your batteries regularly. You don't want to be in a situation where you're in a dark alley or you're in a parking garage or something and you can't see so you need to know what that person is doing you go to click your light on and nothing happens charge or change batteries regularly also if you carry like every day you know don't go to the range very much or at least the gun you carry you don't take to the range because i know people who have a carry gun they carry that specifically they have a range gun they take that to the gun or they take that to the range specifically if you have a carry gun only every once in a while you need to be cleaning it oiling it because from your shirt and all that you know dust going around you know i work in a dusty area so my guns get a little dusty but you need to clean them because you get a whole bunch of fabric dust and lint and stuff in your gun. It is going to change how the slide racks back and, you know, all that. You get too much gunk in there. The oil is going to stick to it. It's going to clump up. So you need to, to clean and oil your guns regularly, even if you're not shooting them, if you're carrying them all the time. Now, if it's in a safe, you know, sit in a safe, you know, you oiled it, put it in the safe, it'd be good. But if you're carrying it all the time, you're going to get dust, dirt, debris, lint, you know, fabric. It's going to get in there some way, shape, or form. And at least give it a, a little wipe down, spritz of oil every now and then. Won't hurt at all. But, yeah, I 100% think something is changing. Something's going to happen. It's it's an election year, so you, you might want to go out and get that gun that you want, you know. I don't I don't necessarily believe in Glocks, you know, like but that's what you wanna get. Go get you a Glock. They are reliable, one hundred percent. A little more expensive in my opinion. You can get you a but if we're talking budget for pistols, you can get like a, um the Taurus G X four, the Taurus G three C, you can get the G two C if you want, but me personally I like the G3C better. It's got an updated trigger and updated sights. Feels better in the hand. You can get the the GX4 carry. You can get the G3C carry or the G3C XL. It's a little bit larger version. Um, the BRG9 Elite. It's a Springfield XD clone. That's a pretty nice gun. It's actually what I'm carrying today full-size daddy with the spare mag you know but um that one it's by a buffalo cartridge company it's only like a 250 dollar gun but me personally i like it um another one it's a little bit more on the expensive side but it is a really really nice gun smith and wesson equalizer i love it it comes from the factory with a 10 rounder a 13 rounder and a 15 rounder it comes optics cut um it's got nice slide serrations it's got like a, a easy rack you can't air rack it it's not that easy but it is a very easy rack to it it comes with a, a mag loader a uplula mag loader i believe is what it's called so i mean yeah it's it's a really nice gun it's i think msrp is about 600 dollars right now i think it's 599 but i love that gun you know I mean, you, I got the BRG9 Lee, so obviously I like that gun too because I'm carrying it today over the Smith & Wesson, but I like that as well. And then I have a um, 
T saws 1911 and 45 ACP. I like that one too. I carry that quite often. It's a little awkward sometimes because it's a full size gun and I appendix carry. So once in a while, like depending on how I'm sitting, I'll sit down and just squish one of the boys. I don't like having a barrel squishing my boys. So I usually only carry that when I'm open carrying or something. I don't really can conceal carry that very much. And if I do, it's usually like got a little more clothing on which I, I could still carry that just as good as I can conceal carry this which they're both about the same size you know this one's nine mil that one's 45 which this one's got a 16 round mag the other one only has a uh, eight eight or nine round mag I think it's a nine round mag so I do get quite a bit more capacity with this but 45 you know 45 i'm a nine millimeter guy you know obviously all the guns except one that i listed off is a nine mil but i like my 45 too and then the 12 gauge i got a it's a turkish 12 gauge it's it's nice though it's got wood furniture it's got nickel plating um it's got like a heat shield on the top it's it's nice and then the ar-15 that's just a build just a, just a um, uh, gun shop build, you know, and just fucking slap it all together. I did have a, a red dot on there for a while, but I took it off, went back to the iron sights. Because <clears throat> I don't, I mean, yeah, red dot is cool. It's nice, you know, you, you ain't got to line up sights and everything. But me personally, for the range that I shoot at, the, the iron sights do just fine. Plus, I don't have to worry about, you know, it falling and fucking up the the red dot or anything you know which they are made to for a little abuse but you know i don't i don't want to break anything that i spent my money on that i don't have to break and uh iron sights are quite a bit harder to break than a red dot so we gonna be rolling with that but yeah i i 100 percent believe you should be prepared learn how to do some some things on your own you know get some some ammo some weapons machetes hatchets like it does not matter get some weapons if you can own firearms get some firearms train with them firearms so get a guard dog there's an alarm system be prepared learn how to grow your own food or at least a little bit of it stockpile some you know get some water some rice beans you know get some shit well, that's, that's the end of this, uh, this TED Talk, or whatever you want to call it. But yeah, be prepared. Something's coming. <laughs>